The following program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry. Where are you right now? Are you living in bondage, in despair, without hope, depressed, no joy, a life of sin? You need to come, get into these waters, give your life to Jesus, and let Him set you free. Welcome to Lift Up Jesus. I'm Dudley Rutherford, Senior Pastor of Shepherd Church, and I wanna thank you for joining me here today. I'm sharing a message that I believe will impact your life in a powerful way. You're here for a reason, and God has an important plan for your life. So take a quick moment, grab your Bible, a pen, your notes, and let's begin today's lesson. And he says to his army, go get those slaves and bring them back to Egypt. So they're chasing him down there. Their backs are up against the wall. Moses, he stands, he raises his hands like this, and the waters part miraculously. And to these two walls of water, and Israel walks across the Red Sea on dry ground. They get on this side, eight miles across, and they look, and here comes the Egyptian army, and they get scared again, and they're afraid they're gonna go back into slavery, and Moses lowers his hands, and the waters collapse, and the entire Egyptian army's wiped off the face of the earth. God showed up. <laughs> now, I want you to write this down. 1 Corinthians 10, just write it down. 1 Corinthians 10. Don't read it now, but read it this afternoon. 1 Corinthians 10 says that Israel crossing that Red Sea is kind of like when you're baptized as a Christian. You say, that's not in there. Oh, yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, have you read it? Read it. It says that when you get baptized, it's just like Israel going through the Red Sea you're finally set free from your past. You're set free from bondage. You've been delivered as Israel was delivered. That's what it says. And you're now a child of God. So I want to ask you, how many of you, how many of you have ever been baptized? You've ever been baptized? Raise your hand. Look around, look around, look around. Okay. How many of you were baptized here at this church? You were baptized. Okay. So what happened is when you were baptized... You are bearing the old you, the old sins. You are now delivered. You've now been set free from your past. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ, you've been set free from the burden and the weight of sin. And if and when you die, you get to go to heaven, not because of anything you've done, but because of the miracle of salvation that God brought into your life through Jesus Christ. But the problem is that many of you think that once you get saved, that that's all there is to this thing called living the Christian life. And there is so, 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 so much more than just being baptized and getting saved and being delivered from your bondage. Which leads us to stage two, write this down. The wilderness, the meandering around. Stage two, don't live on the borderline. After the Red Sea, after they came out of Egypt finally, they end up in this wilderness for 40 years. If you look up here, they get all the way up to Kadesh, Barnea. Everybody say Kadesh. Look, look how close they are. They're like, they're like, they're like four days away. 
Uh, For 430 years, they were in Egypt as slaves. For 40 years, they're wandering around. They get within just a couple of days of going into the promised land, but because of sin, because of grumbling, because of complaining, because of lack of faith, it is so sad. They end up having to wander around there, an entire generation dies off, an entire generation of people did not get to enter the promised land. Oh, they lived right there on the border of the promised land, and yet they had to settle for the good when God had so much more in store. People lived and died and never got to experience God's best because of sin and disobedience. They lived close to God's blessing, but they had to settle for just existing in the promised land. And today, when I look across this audience, I know there are many people, oh, you're saved, I'm glad you're saved, you got baptized, I'm so glad you got baptized, but you're still, you've never really experienced all that God has in store because you're content with living on the borderline between good and great. Write this down, Canaan is the place of spiritual abundance. And the wilderness is a place of spiritual monotony. Do you know what Israel ate for 40 years? Manna. He supernaturally fed them every day with these little wafers that appeared on the ground. You can read about this in Exodus 16 and Numbers 11. When they first saw it, they called it manhu, which means what is it? they didn't know what it was and the closest thing that we have found today to what it's like are (laughs) cornflakes and according to numbers 11 they had cornflakes every morning for breakfast they had cornflakes every day for lunch and cornflakes every night for dinner cornflakes cornflakes (laughs) cornflakes not barbecue cornflakes not cornflakes Cajun style, not cornflakes souffle, not salsa in cornflakes, just cornflakes for 40 years. And the Bible actually says this, that they got so sick and tired of cornflakes that they actually wished that they could go back into Egypt as slaves. Because at least in Egypt, they had cucumbers, and they had onions, and they had garlic, none of which really tastes that good to me. (laughs) The wilderness represents carnal Christians. Oh, you're saved. I'm glad you're saved. But you're still longing for some of the things that you had back when you were in bondage. You've become bored with what you have now. And you've never stepped into the full blessing and abundant life that God has called you to live. You're in limbo in the desert. Dryness, the dullness in your faith. Your Christian walk has become monotonous. And maybe, yes, you got out of bondage, but you've never stepped into the abundant life. Which leads me to point three, the Jordan River crossing. God bringing you into the land of blessings. There is so much more to the Christian life than just having your sins forgiven. Hold on, I don't want to underestimate that. But being liberated from your past and just getting to go to heaven one day, there's so much more than that. John 10, 10, you should know this verse. It says, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that you might have it abundantly. So many Christians come right to the edge of God's full and abundant blessings. But we turn back and kind of wander around in a spiritual funk for the rest of our lives. The Israelites for 40 years, for an entire generation, they lived so close to Canaan, they came right up there to the threshold. They kept turning back into that dry desert wilderness until finally, as we read today, it's time. Everybody say it's time to get out of that desert, stop wandering around, and get into that place where God has called you to live. But how? Four ways. I hope you get these. Number one, you have to concentrate and keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Joshua 3.3, 3, we read this. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, when you see, when you see it, you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priest who are Levites carrying it, you, here are the instructions, move out from your positions and follow it. Focus, concentrate on God and the things of God. Hebrews 12.2 tells us as believers to fix, fix our eyes on Jesus. It also tells us to run the race uh, with perseverance, this race that's marked out for us. We as believers, we are running a race. What's the secret? Keep your eyes, fix your eyes on Jesus. That's, the, that's how you enter into this land, I believe. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you, know, you want to know what's wrong with our country? You want to know what's wrong with the United States of America? What's wrong with most most of our lives is we've taken our eyes off of Jesus we've taken our eyes off of Jesus oh we look at all the social media pages and we study politics and pleasure and people and we look at the sins of the world and we've taken our eye, we take our we keep our eyes just on ourselves. but this barrier between good and great between just kind of wandering around and really experiencing the goodness of Almighty God is to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and just follow Him wherever He leads you. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. <laughs> Number two, is consecrate. That, that word is in this text. It's in this text. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And that word, consecrate, means to be set apart you say what does that mean that means listen it means that you and i are to be different than the world and so many of us we we act like the world we talk like the world we think like the world we dress like the world we drink like the world you and i are to be different than the world joshua is saying hey we're going in keep your eyes on jesus but when you get in there don't you be acting like the Hivites and the Girgashites and all those other I. You act, you, you are, we are different than the people we're going in to see. Sin, worldliness. That's why we're living in the wilderness. Sin ruins everything. Sin separates us from God. Sin calluses our heart. Sin dulls our conscience. Sin is what destroys our marriages and our families. Sin leads our, us astray. Sin breaks the heart of God. Sin leads to despair and bondage. And what do we do? We dabble with sin. We flirt with sin. We play with sin. We participate with sin. We compromise with sin. And, and Joshua is saying, hey, we're going in. We have to set it, all that worldliness stuff apart. We ourselves have been set apart. And number three, write this down, culminate, which is to step out in faith. If you, if you follow Jesus wherever he leads and you believe that you've been set apart, and as you follow, step out, step out in faith. All right? Are you with me? Step three, now the Jordan is at flood stage. Everybody say flood stage. All during the harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called what? A town called Adam. I want to go back to our map for a second. You see Mount Hermon up there? That's where all this water comes from. It rains and snows up in Mount Hermon, and the water flows down in the Sea of Galilee where Jesus spent most of his life. And that water flows all the way down to the Dead Sea. Mount Hermon to the Dead Sea is 130 miles. It's the distance from here to San Diego. And Today, when we go over there in a couple of months with people from the church, this river doesn't look very wide. It kind of looks narrow. Some parts you think you could just jump over it. And there's a reason why, because today when we go over there, it's just like California. 
there's too many people. We got all this snow up here in the Saharas that flows down here, but by the time it gets here, there's nothing left. And so there, it's the same thing today, today, Israel's pulling the water, the Jordanians are pulling the water. The biggest issues in Jordan or in Israel is the water. They're not arguing over the oil, they're arguing over the, who gets the water. And, but back in those days, they, you didn't have all the farmers that you have today. You didn't have countries drawing the water. There was plenty of water. The, the, there was much more water back in these days. But also what we read was it's flood stage. And so I always assumed that when the priests stepped in the water, that it was like the Red Sea when Moses, remember when Moses did this and he raised his hand and the water just departed and they walked, that's what I thought, that's, that's what I thought. I thought when the priest stepped in, it was just like when Moses stepped, when Moses did this, but that's not what we read, if you read it carefully. What you read was that as soon as the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant stepped into the raging flood stage Jordan River, that the water heaped up in a town called Adam, 18, 20 miles to the north. You say, well, what does that mean? What that means is that when they stepped in this water, that God created a miracle up there. The water dammed up at Adam. So when the priest, when the priest stepped into the water, they didn't know that God had done a miracle 20 miles away. When they stepped into the water, the water was still raging. It was still flowing. 20 miles worth of water came by them, flowed down into the Dead Sea, then it became dry, then the nation of Israel came across on dry ground. And what that means is that when God calls you to do something and you just step out in faith, you might not see the miracle right then, but God is working a miracle. You just don't know it yet. And then number four, don't leave me. They got to celebrate. So they go in here. This is unbelievable. They walk in, they go across here. They go to Gilgal. Next week we're going to talk about Jericho. But what happened? Here's what it says. Oh, don't, don't lose this. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated. Verse 11. The day after the Passover, that very day, what did they do? They got to eat the produce of the land. Some unleavened bread and some roasted grain. And verse 12 says, the manna stopped. The day after they ate this food from the land, there was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce from the land of Canaan. No more cornflakes. Now, let's all stand. I want to ask you, I have one question to ask you. Just stand, one question. You're getting out of here in record time. Go to the other map. I just want to ask you, where are you right now? Are you living in bondage? In despair, without hope, depressed, no joy, a life of sin? You need to come walk down here get into these waters give your life to jesus and let him set you free Amen. have you have you ever been baptized and now you're just kind of wandering around 
Oh, you're saved. If you died right now, you'd get to go to heaven. I got that. But you're missing out on an entire life of God's best for you. Can you, in faith, cross over that barrier, whatever it is? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Consecrate yourself. And walk every day of your life in faith, believing that God's going to see you through any situation. I have a special resource for all of you today. This is a devotional book. It has 365 devotions. This has, again, a verse, a story to read, a prayer to pray, and three study questions, and a place to journal. And we had over 100 different authors who helped us put this book together. And the idea is that there's 365 devotions to help you have a better relationship with King Jesus day by day. In fact, when you get the book, you'll see the, the price tag on the back is $24.95. And for a gift of any size, uh, we will send this book to you because we want everyone to have this book. You'll have the time of your life going through this and you'll have a better relationship with Jesus Christ. It's called Romancing Royalty. And we are in a loving relationship with the King of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Kathy and I lead the Anchor Cancer Support Group here at Shepherd Church. On August 17th, 2011, I heard the words that nobody wants to hear, and that is, I had cancer. And when I had um, that diagnosis, I did not want to share it with anybody, but God had a different plan in that for me. And so, it was pretty clear that during my surgery, my chemo, my radiation, all the side effects that I experienced, and even losing my hair, that God knew that I was going to be where I am today. The things that I experienced when I was going through my journey, by getting love from other people, getting food, getting prayers, uh, even provisions that I didn't expect, was such a blessing to me that I knew that I had to turn it around and give it to others. So God put it on my heart to lead a cancer support life group in my home. We call on each other, we take each other to our doctor's appointments, and we pray for each other right before we're getting ready to go in for our treatments or our scans. We also provide food and, and support for them during their journey. Later on, when I was ready to start the group, God gave me the name Anchor, and I know now why. Because when you think of an anchor, you know that it is linked to a chain. And the members of this group are the links of that chain that were linked on to one another, strong, standing firm to our Father, who is our anchor. And together, we walk this journey with them through this storm, knowing that we need to depend on each other and through our Father in heaven. This group is for everyone. If you're going through cancer, if you've already gone through all of your treatments and you are in remission, it's also for those that are part of the family. Maybe it's you're the caregiver. Maybe it's your coworker. It also could be for the spouse or the children. And more important, this group is for those that have lost someone that have finally gone to see our Father in heaven. And they come back and they share their journey and they love on one another because they've walked that. There are a million and a half people in Los Angeles County living with some form of cancer. And I am so grateful to Shepherd Church for opening up their doors to allow us to have this amazing ministry here. The people of this community need this ministry. And we are so happy to be able to have it here so that we can give them hope and encouragement during their journey. Oh, I hope you were blessed by today's message. You can watch it again by visiting our website at liftupjesus.com, clicking the watch and listen button up there at the top of that page. And when you're on the site, would you please consider giving a financial gift or even better, becoming a monthly partner? Again, you can find all this at our website, liftupjesus.com. God has called us to take this message to the world but we need your help. 
Your prayers and financial support are incredibly important for helping us make a difference in the lives of millions of people. I'll see you here again next week, same time, same place. And until then, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. As I look across this audience, I see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I want you to know, listen, that the world around us, the world around us right now, they are standing up and they are taking notice of what God is doing over here at Shepherd of the Hills Church. They are noticing. Hey, it's Pastor Dudley Rutherford here at Lift Up Jesus Radio and Television Ministry. And I want to thank you for being a part of this ministry, listening here today. What you need is the Great Shepherd. And if you got the Great Shepherd, you don't need anything else. Our desire is to take the gospel to the entire world, not just to your city and not just to your house, but to every city and to every house. And we know that we're living in those last days. The Lord has to come soon. There's just too much going on in the world for Him not to come. As you look back over 2020, I want to ask, has He not yet still protected you? Has He not still yet loved you and financed you and guarded you and cared for you and watched over you and forgiven you and kept you all of 2020? Has not yet God taken care of you? Don't ever, 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 ever give up that no matter what Satan throws at you, you just keep putting your hope in God. And I would tell you that right now with the current fears because of COVID-19 and with the use of our online services, that it is easier now to lead people to Jesus Christ than it's ever been before. We need people like you who believe in this ministry to come alongside us and to support us faithfully with their prayers, with their finances, with the word of mouth. You can share this on social media, but we need people like you who would seriously consider becoming a partner with us. It's just about lifting up Jesus, preaching the word in an uncompromising manner and have a chance to put their faith and trust in Jesus. Because what is needed most in the United States of America is the revival and the people of God turning their hearts back to an almighty God. That's what's needed most.